So as Rakesh said, when we think about learning, we often think about information transmission from one mind directly into the other minds. But you all know that that's not how learning works. And if you didn't know that half an hour ago, now you do. Uh, learning is construction, not just reception. And Ken and Emma, I hope, convinced you that the best way of teaching, therefore, is not just to spit out knowledge, but to target personalized teaching to the learner so that students can construct this kind of knowledge for themselves based on what they bring to the educational experience. So the US National Educational Technology Plan lists four aspects of personalization that need to be addressed in any effective program. Individualization, differentiation, connection to what the learner knows, and connecting to the whole learner. And it's these last two that I'm going to talk about. Because there is a cultural and social context to learning that we must not ignore. It includes personality, but also other things. For example, researcher Barbara Rogoff showed that children from indigenous families in Mexico are penalized in the classroom for not speaking up. But in those families, children learn from observing. They're not supposed to speak up. Likewise, in Ireland, children from poor families are penalized for all speaking at once. But my student Mike Anony and I showed that, in fact, these students are simply exceptionally capable of speaking and listening at the same time. <laughs> now, today we're facing a revolution in online learning. But this revolution is not necessarily targeting the sociocultural context. For example, three quarters of all students enrolled in MOOCs come from outside the United States. But three quarters of all instructors of MOOCs come from inside the United States. Now this means that there's a model of learning that is not necessarily the one that works best for all of these students. So in my group, and in all of the work that we do, we're looking at actual context. These are images of us bringing an interactive tutoring system into South and Central America. Those children collaborate in ways that the software was not originally designed to work with. And why shouldn't they collaborate? We all collaborate as adults in our day-to-day -day life. And we need to make sure that that's a part of learning. So we've begun to implement technologies that actually take into account the personal, social, cultural context. Here's a very real and important example. Many children come to school speaking a stigmatized dialect. In the US, it might be African American English. In France, it might be the dialect of the Paris banlieue. In each case, teachers don't necessarily realize the cultural importance of that dialect. And they may say negative things about it. But my students and I have shown that when students learn with a virtual child who speaks their stigmatized dialect, they do better science in the classroom. On the other hand, when students hear a teacher, this is an actual teacher comment, say, students who don't take advantage of their education and sound like they belong in the street end up in the street. Those students filled out a questionnaire that indicated that students who speak like them are less intelligent than students who speak the mainstream dialect. That has a terrible effect on their ability to learn and their faith in themselves. A recent study found that learning gains in MOOCs were not related to watching lecture material, but to interaction with peers. And so many educational systems are targeting rapport with the student. But rapport is not necessarily all niceness. This is actual data from a peer tutoring study of linear algebra. It's not exactly essential to linear algebra, what you see up here, but it is essential to rapport. We've found that students who insult one another learn more. Now, the goal is not to invent rude technology, although it turns out that when students insult software of this kind, they also learn more. What is the goal, then? The goal is to remember that every student is an individual with individual knowledge, individual abilities, but also an individual social and cultural context. And it is only in targeting the whole learner, both for young children, for high school students, and for adults, that we're truly able to unlock the entire learning potential of every individual. Thank you.